Hi, I am Ocha and today I would like to make an experiment. I would like to explore the possibilities of guitar effect pedals in a synthesizer based setup. I have assembled 14 different effect pedals and to send sound in them I have selected the Microfreak synthesizer. My goal is to create unique and interesting sounds but also I'm doing this for science because working with hardware equipment implies a couple of things and there is one thing I am scared of. So let's check how is this background noise when we turn everything on without sending anything in it. Okay, so there is definitely some background noise. See, each equipment you add can bring in some background noise, and when you plug as many in this way, this background noise can add up and can become pretty loud in the end. Especially with distortion pedals that will bring everything up. See, we're already experimenting, so how do we proceed? To make things more interesting, I have hidden all the pedals from view and assigned them a number. I will use a random number generator to select the next pedal to reveal, then we'll discuss its features and add it to the chain. So first I'll add all the pedals and then I'll try a couple of things. The order of the effect in the chain is predetermined, as I would like to try some things first, and all the pedals I will be using today happen to be from the same brand, Sonic Cake. This is not really a sponsored video as I'm doing this on my own, but they were kind enough to send me all those pedals for me to try, so I thought that was the perfect video to try them out. So let's start right now with this pedal that I need to reveal first and that will be our first pedal in our chain of effect. This is Sonic ABY. This is a splitter, so that will take the signal from this input and send it out through two outputs. So that goes out to two chains of effect. You can switch between the two chains with this foot switch if you are in AB mode, and you have a Y mode to have the both chains play simultaneously in parallel. So during this video, I will switch between chain A, chain B, and both at the same time. So for now, we should hear the synthesizer without any effect, so here is how it sounds. And with this, I'll probably play with the low pass filter and the filter envelope. And I'll probably play with the waveform as well. So let's add the next pedal. I will generate a number from 1 to 13, and that will be 7. And that will be the Crybot pedal. This is an auto wah pedal to add motion to your sound. It's like a filter that will open with every note that comes in to do a wah wah sound. So the controls are the sensitivity to set how it will automatically detect the notes that comes in to open the filter. The decay to control how long the wah sound will be. The presence to control the brightness. And the big knob in the middle is the frequency. So let's hear how it sounds. So that's a nice wah wah to add some motion, but maybe I will change its position in the chain, but we'll see that once we have more pedals in the chain. So the next one is the number six. So that will be the Levitate pedal. Levitate is one of the newer pedals from Sonic Cake. It is both a reverb and a delay effect, and that's why I've put it at the end of the chain. You can activate the reverb with this foot switch, and you would then have the dry wet here and the decay time here. And the other foot switch will activate the delay for which you have the delay time and the feedback knob. And instead of a dry wet knob, you would have two separate knobs for the volumes of both the dry signal and the delayed repetitions. So for now, both effects are on different chains. Let's see how it sounds. First, I'll add the reverb. <laughs> and add a little bit of delay with it. Now on to the next pedal from 1 to 11 and that will be number 8. And that will be the Wave Crush. Wave Crush is a bit crusher to either add crunch or totally mangle your sound. It is meant to reduce the quality of the signal to the point it becomes a distortion effect. The big button in the middle is the sample rate that you can reduce and that will create a particular type of distortion. I have a video on big crushers that explains in detail how reducing the sample rate transforms the sound if you want to see exactly how it works. And same for the bit resolution that is here that you can reduce as well. Right now we are in classic mode, but there are two more modes that will sound different. There is radio, that will simulate more of a radio sound, and gram, that will simulate more of a gramophone. And then you have a dry wet, which is always cool.
Okay, let's add one more from one to 10, and that's number six. And that would be the Blue Screamer. This is a tube distortion type of distortion to warm up the sound with the big drive knob in the middle. You can choose between two sounds with this switch. There's loud, that is more aggressive, and there's warm, that is softer. Then you have the tone knob, which is a filter to lower the higher frequencies to have a smoother sound, and the general volume of the pedal. Okay, let's add another one to nine, and that's five. And that will be the Warp Dimension. Warp Dimension is also one of the newer pedals from Sonic Cake, and it can be either a chorus, a flanger, a phaser, or a tremolo effect. Each of those effects have an LFO, so you can change its rate here, or you can tap the tempo you want with this foot switch. I don't know how practical that is. Then you can change the depth of the modulation here, which is kind of the strength of the effect, and then you would have a tone knob to make the sound more or less bright, and you have the general volume of the pedal here. So it's funny because on one chain we have only filtering and distortion, and on the other we have time-based effects, like reverb, delay, and now caressing and flanging. Why do we have crackling? Okay. Okay, so the Bruce Creamer introduces crackling. Okay. Let's add another from one to eight, and that will be number six. And that will be the cloud chorus. This is an analog chorus. If you want to see exactly how a chorus works, I have a video on that as well, on chorus, phasers, and flanger effects. So basically, we'd play two copies of your sound that played together will merge and create an interesting effect. One of the copies will stay as is, and the other will be pitched up and down, continuously oscillating. So you can control the speed of that oscillation with the big knob, and you can control the depth here to set how far the pitch will drift. And there you have the level, which is actually a dry wet knob. Yeah, it gives it kind of a super soul feel, kind of a Reese bass feel. Okay, another one from one to seven, that will be number three. Huh, that will be the Phasic Cream pedal. This is a more aggressive analog fuzz pedal with super simple controls. The big knob is the drive gain, this is a tone to control the brightness of the sound, and this is the general volume of the pedal. That's funny because this first pedal adds a lot more harmonics to the sound and then it goes to the phaser which has the effect of kind of a filter with a few notches. So now the effect of the phaser is a lot more hearable. this sound. Let's hear it with both chains.
Let's add one more from one to six. That would be number two. And that would be the root mouse. Woo, that adds a lot of noise. It is an analog of a drive pedal, so it's similar to the Blue Screamer. And it also has two modes, one classic mode that is warmer and a hot mode that is brighter. The big knob is of course the drive amount and there's also a filter knob to control the tone and the general volume here. Wow, that adds a lot of noise. Just turning the knob like... It's like a plane is passing by. Okay, it's usable, but I have to turn down the gain after I play each note, because while I play each note, it ducks down the background noise, but as soon as I release a key, I have to turn down the gain, because the background noise will go way up. Maybe that's not a pedal I will use in my final chain, but for now, that's how I will use it. So let's hear how it sounds with both chains at the same time. Another pedal from 1 to 5, and that will be number 2 again. Number 2, this is Sonic IR. This one is interesting and is maybe the only pedal of the bunch that cannot be bypassed. This is basically a cabinet simulation. When you run the sound of your guitar through an amp and record it with a microphone, you'd get a particular sound that is given by the particular speaker in the particular room you're in, recorded by a particular microphone with a particular placement. This pedal recreates this type of tones and IR is the technology it uses to achieve that. So here you can choose between 11 different cap simulations and actually that's a good combination with the distortions before that are already on because those cabinet simulators are often used after the distortions to have this simulation of a guitar pedal going through an amp. Okay, now with both chains. One more, that will be between one and four, and that will be number three. And I think that will be this one, this Echo Rain. This is a delay effect, so the big knob is the delay time. The feedback knob here sets the number of repetitions. It is called repeat knob here. And the blend, which is the dry wet knob. And the delay time is short enough that we can do crazy things like Ooh. Okay, Okay. three left, so between one and three, and that will be number two. So this would be the shark pedal. Mm. This is an analog distortion with the distortion amount here, and it has three types of distortion. There's normal, which is kind of the middle ground, there's modern, which is more aggressive for big solos, and classic, which is smoother to give more of a old school vibe. You can then control the tone, which makes the sound smoother by cutting the higher frequencies, and you have the general volume of the pedal. Wow, that brings up a lot of noise. So let's hear it with both chains. Ah, but now I have to play with two gain knobs. Okay, one out of two, and that will be number Two. So that would be the Sonic Ambience. Sonic Ambience is a delay and reverb combo. In blue is the reverb with the reverb type here. You have a room, a hall, a church and a plate reverb. And this
this is the dry wet for the reverb and the green is for the delay where you can also choose between four types of delays here. There's an analog delay, a digital delay, a tape delay style and one with reverse feedback. Then the delay time is here, here is the feedback and this is the dry wet. Now with both chains. And so the last pedal that we're going to add is this one, the Tone Group pedal. The Tone Group is a graphic equalizer with each fader representing a bend of frequency. So I think that could be great either toward the end of the chain to kind of shape the final sound or in the beginning of the chain before the distortion because that would allow to boost or cut specific frequencies to change the tone given by the distortion. So I decided to try it at the beginning of the chain first. Ok, so now that everything is on, I will try to deactivate some of them that I think are a bit too much. Like if we make a bass sound for example, it is not advised to put any reverb or delay on that. So let's deactivate that to see how it goes. There's still a lot of background noise, but I like this sound. I will also deactivate the beat crusher because that adds some noise at the end of each note and I think that's a bit messy. All the other way around, if I play on higher octave, we can try to make a lead sound and then use some reverb and delay. This time I won't be using the shark or the rude mouse that appear to add a lot of background noise. Still with some distortion, hear how it sounds when I play two close notes together. Ok, so now that we've tested all those pedals, let's try to make one big chain of effect instead of having two in parallel. So first, I'll get rid of this ABY pedal and go directly into a distortion pedal. So the chain goes distortion, distortion, then cabinet simulation, Ottawa, then a chorus, then either a phaser or a flanger, I think. Then it will go into a reverb and delay and then a EQ at the end to shape the sound. Ok, so that was a lot of fun, a lot of experiments. What other things that I've learned today, what other takeaways? Uh, let's jump to the conclusion. So, what have we learned? I have learned today that the problem with the noise is something real with hardware equipment and I don't know how you could work around that having so many pedals. I have tried to use a particular type of uh, power supply for pedals that is uh, filtered and isolated to reduce the noise um, that comes from the electricity powering the pedals, but I think there will always be some background noise at some level with this kind of equipment. It's just with that many distortion pedals, all this noise is brought up quite a lot. So, so one by one, I think all those pedals sound pretty good, but you have to be pretty selective if you want to make a chain of effect with them. Which leads me to my second point, is that I think doing some design in this way is pretty doable, but if I had to use those pedals again, it would be for a live setup. Like, if you are used to plugins and VSTs and you want to do sound design, why would you use guitar pedals when you could have uh, more flexibility and a cleaner sound with softwares? But for live performance, that changes the game. Because if you play live with a synthesizer, you would be restricted to the sounds and effects that are in your synthesizers, which can be good and that can be more than enough, but being able to add more effects just opens more possibilities and a lot of cool sounds. That can be a lot of fun to play with and that can really add something to a live performance. 
So I'd be curious to know if you have any recommendation for effect pedals to use with synth, and if you do, please leave them in the comments as I'd like to see that. I'll take a moment to say a huge thank you to my Patreon supporters whose names are appearing here, and if you made it to this point of the video, also thank you for watching. Um, I think that's all for me, so take care, have a good night, have a good day, and I'll see you next time. Bye.